I have recorded so much for this channel over the last like three months and I haven't published any of it. Welcome to number two. I really like places like this. I'm gonna be a whole lot more regular about updates. More stories, more adventures, more fun. So let's catch up. A few weeks ago I did a review on Runner's High Herbals. They uh, sent me a little tin of the Rub Rub. It's their new anti-chafe cream um, bomb. Put the link in the video below. This stuff is fantastic. I used it at the, um, the TRT 100. And uh, no problems um, anywhere on the undercarriage and uh, on my feet. More on foot cream not just at the TRT, but the Tahoe 200 from two years ago when I was doing medical stuff and how to prevent blisters depending on regardless of what shoes or footwear you wear. So follow along and we'll talk about that one soon. This whole video is about foot stuff. It's about answering all the questions that I got before, during, and after the TRT 100, which usually revolved around how do you do 100 miles in sandals? That's nuts. My first answer to that is absolutely, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, I love it, I have a great time. What else happened? Oh yeah, I was on my way to help out at the forest fires that are burning outside Yosemite and I got into a four car crash. Uh, so I haven't ran in like a week and uh, that's driving me crazy. But I had this like crazy pain in my neck and um, I have the Tahoe 200 in one month and it is freaking me out that I'm gonna be where I was last year laid up with an injury in the month before the Tahoe 200 so hopefully I will feel better soon and uh, and get back on the trails and, and get back into some miles we'll see so let's jump into it I think there's four questions I always get asked the most that's uh, you know how do you deal with rocks and roots and how do you not like kick everything and break your toes uh, you know, how do you deal without art support? How do you, uh, how do you deal with the tread and the terrain? And then, uh, you know, how does the, um, how does the strap feel between your toes? And, and I think that the toes and the, uh, the art support question, those get answered kind of in the same thing. You know, um, when I first started running minimalist, I started running in five room, five fingers. And I, uh, I broke my metatarsals in both feet. I, uh, I did too much too soon. I didn't know what I was doing. I just jumped right into it. And I had all these problems. Uh, you know, I thought that, you know, I jumped into the, to the minimalist hype in like 2010. And I, and I thought that that would solve all my problems and my pains. Um, and it actually caused a whole bunch because I, I did too much too soon and I just, I didn't practice right. You know, if you Google uh, barefoot training, barefoot strides, you'll see a whole lot of information out there. Uh, you know, Runner's World articles, outside articles, men's health, you know, women's health, fitness journals, all kinds of stuff that says, you know, like if you're a runner and if you're into fitness, you should do barefoot strides uh, one, two, three times a week. Go to some grassy field and just, you know, do strides barefoot, but start little, build up, and eventually, uh, you know, you'll be, you'll be incorporating this as, a, as an active part of your training. And that's kind of um, the mindset that I skipped over. You know, I just put on the five fingers and just took off. What happened was I didn't learn how to run correctly. I didn't trust in myself and trust in my feet. You know, 25% of your bones are inside your feet. You have, you know, these tendons, these ligaments. You have an arch, it's load-bearing design, right? You have your ankle, which is a hinge, you, uh, you know, with muscle and fascia and tendons. You know, you have your knee and your hips. You have these, these three parts of this, like, you know, big mechanical spring um, and if you take an egg and you put an inch of like EVA foam on top of it and you drop 175 pounds on top of that foam the egg's still gonna smash you know if you put nine millimeters of rubber between that egg and 175 pounds you know you're just gonna smash the egg anyway relying on this to prevent injury is a silly idea relying on an inch of foam to prevent injury is a silly concept and a silly notion. If you uh, train right, train smart, incorporate some barefoot training, build up a good form, keep your feet underneath your center of gravity, you'll find you'll have stronger feet, 
uh, better control, better motion control. Uh, you know, as you're jumping over rocks and roots, your um, you know your footfall will be softer, your stride will be leaner, your uh, economy of form will be much better, and you'll be happier overall. You'll be running better and more efficient. And there's a uh, good science that's coming out of the University of North Florida that shows that uh, you know running barefoot and spending time barefoot will actually improve your working memory. That you know moving across the ground and uh, you know engaging your peripheral vision and your you know cognitive thoughts, you will have this uh, ability to kind of see the ground in front of you and remember it as a second notion, as a second nature. You will be able to move freely and comfortably while. Um, you know, not thinking about the ground ahead of you, but seeing it and remembering what's there. So when I say like, I don't kick rocks, or I don't kick roots, you know, now it becomes a point in my running, you know, a few years later that I can carry on entire conversations. And um, as long as I kind of keep my situational awareness, I don't have these problems. Um, and I think it's kind of a testament to this idea that your working memory is improved by moving barefoot and spending time barefoot, that when you engage and, and, and really become kind of present in the moment, um, you know, both holistically and, um, you know, through your mechanics, right, through your actual biomechanics and the way that you're moving and, and, and kind of striding across the ground, you know, you have this, um, this presence of mind that allows you to see, interpret and remember and engage and, and, and overcome the obstacles that are before you. I don't have a lot of problems whenever I kick rocks or kick something that hurts my toe. Either I don't have my headlamp, that happened once and that was awful. Um, I was at night and I was trying to stumble my way through the dark. I got caught out on a long run. Um, or I'm tired and I'm lazy. And interestingly enough, whenever I get injured or I feel like strain or pain um, when I'm running like a road marathon, a road half marathon, or road miles or training, it's because the, the road is just flat. It doesn't change. Um, you know, even sm slight deviations inside a uh, inside the like a sidewalk, it doesn't um, it doesn't engage me enough. So I end up kind of forgetting about things and just going into autopilot. And that's when I start to feel like twings and twangs in my ankles or my Achilles or my heel or my calf or shins or whatever, because I, I, I'm not focused. I'm not being present in the moment. And I'm just kind of being lazy in my stride, lazy in my form. And that's how injuries happen. So when those moments happen, I usually stop, pause, and kind of walk for a minute. Or I'll uh, sometimes I'll take off my sandals and run barefoot for a minute because when you actually run barefoot on painful surfaces, your mind will tell you this hurts, and you'll slow down, and you'll have like better economy of form. You'll step lighter. You'll engage your ankles, your knees, your calves, your thighs, your hips, your glutes, your butts. Work through it in a way that dampens the force through mechanics rather than relying on the soles of your feet. Uh, of course, the feedback comes from the soles of your feet, but that's where your nerve endings are. So listen to them, pay attention to them, trust in your body, and you'll be fine. You know, that's uh, again going back how I avoid obstacles, how I avoid rocks, you know, how I can deal without art support. You know, I have a huge high arch, right? And, um, and it's fine. It, uh, it bears the load and it bears the load comfortably. Next up, straps. I, uh, whenever you get a new pair of, of earth runners or sandals or whatever you have, um, even footwear, right? They always say have a break-in period. Take it for some easy miles, you know, wear them around the house when you're just walking around. Um, you know, go easy, let the fabric stretch and conform and, and, and you know, adjust to your feet. You know, when you get a new pair, you know, wear them around, adjust the straps, adjust uh, to your feet. You know, sometimes you have to slide the buckle around. Um, you know, the, the, the hemp can take a day or two to kind of wrap and conform to your foot. You know, get them wet, let them dry, um, break them in, right? Um, during the break-in period, I found that sometimes I'll put a little bit of anti-chafe cream between my toes, and that'll help, um, you know, especially with some of that stiffness. Um, so maybe that's something you want to try out if, uh, you know, if you feel that they're a little stiff between the toes the first few days of trying them out. Um, now, you know, um, after the, so after the break-in period, I don't really feel like I need to do that. They're comfortable. Um, dirt grit aside, uh, with the 100-mile event, um, you know, especially running around in Lake Tahoe where there's a lot of like granite dust and stuff, I do feel that, um, you know, after 
you know, 20, 25 hours of moving, that dirt, grit, and dust, uh, you know, really tends to kind of like enshroud your feet. And I, and I do feel that there's a little discomfort going on where the, um, the strap meets your skin. And it's not that the strap is uncomfortable, it's that the strap is rubbing dirt and grit onto your skin. And that's the uncomfortable part. You know, it's the reason why uh, people who wear shoes wear gaiters. Um, and that, that friction of that, that sand and that grit that gets between there, that, that's what drives me crazy. So what I found is, um, actually kind of goes back to the Tahoe 200 in 2016. I volunteered at uh, Stephen Jones Station, so it's mile 193. Everybody's feet, by the time they came in there, they looked like just, you know, just torn up, right? Huge blisters the size of like half dollars are covering their entire sole of their foot. I mean, just it's disgusting, awful, horrible things, right? I just have one person who came in, and she took off her shoes, and she peeled off her socks, and her feet looked fresh, like brand new day one. This is like three and a half days in, 193 miles, and her feet looked like she had just, you know, gone on a 5K the morning of. Her secret was uh, every aid station, she did a, um, a baby wipe foot bath, uh, a fresh coat of run goo, um, a fresh pair of Njiji socks, and that's how she rolled for the entirety of the race. The aid stations in the 200 mile are like 10, 20 miles apart. So there's some good distance there. That's a lot of socks too. You know, I tried both run goo and hike goo just to kind of see what the whole hype was about. Um, they have slight differentiations in the um, in the in the ingredients but for the most part they feel the same they felt the same for their friction abrasion reduction I thought it was pretty good you know, a little thinner it's definitely uh, more like a lotion the consistency is, uh, is not very viscous I squeezed some of it into a baggie <laughs> and took it with me uh, at the uh, the Tahoe 200 when I ran last year it's, it's not bad you know I didn't think it was um, Necessarily better than uh, Squirrel's Nut Butter, which was the competition out at the time. But, you know, I had a big tube laying around, so I went with it. Is it something that I would buy again? Probably not. It's not terrible, um, but I feel that you get, uh, you know, more mileage with uh, Squirrel's Nut Butter or uh, Runner's High Herbal's Rub Rub. Anyway, so I took that page from that book and... Um, and now every time when I'm in an aid station or, you know, if my feet feel like I've got a lot of dust and chafing going on, I will take a baby wipe and wipe down my feet and put a little bit of uh, runner's high or, uh, you know, whatever between my toes um, at all the, the, the spots that, that get um, the Tahoe, the TRT last two weeks ago. I actually felt like a little hot spot right about here on the ball of my foot. And I actually ended up putting a little bit on there too, and that that, that resolved it um, without you know causing any sort of um, you know slip and slide on the sandal. The straps keep you pretty much on there, and um, you know especially this tread. You know we'll get back into that later. As far as the strap rubbing, it doesn't. And if I have any problems with you know dust and dirt or grit, um, a, a quick baby wipe and um, you know a little anti chafe, and that resolves that one right away. Um, I know that sometimes the knots can also cause people um, abras abrasions when they first try them out. Same thing, a little anti-chafe cream, and uh, you know, as they as they start to conform to your feet, you'll you'll have uh, less problems and less issue less issues with that. One thing I have heard people say uh, about the heel strap: sometimes the heel strap comes down. Just move your buckle backwards, move it back towards the heel, right, and then it changes the angle at which these two straps. Um, interact right so if the buckles back this way then it causes this angle to you know these two get pulled tighter towards this way slide the buckle this way and then the angle opens up more when it gets cold I will wear in Gigi socks two years ago 2016 um, it was freezing cold that year um, cold in the morning before we started cold during the night going over the ridge was like insanely cold um, you know, I put on the NGGs then, and that, that helped me through it. This year, I didn't wear the NGGs. I didn't need to. It was actually really temperate the entire time. I think I wore my shell once, but I never wore, like, three layers deep. Earthrunners does make a, uh, a split-toe sock, which you can wear with this. I haven't tried them out yet, um, but I assume they are fantastic. Uh, I haven't heard any complaints from the friends of mine who have them, and they say they like them. 
So yeah, so sandal wear and tread wear, right? I put like a thousand mil miles on one of these six millimeter circadians one year. Um, the tread wears down a little bit on the uh, on the heel and the toe, and and you know the the slight parts where your foot impacts. Um, but for the most part, they still have uh, you know pretty good traction. That Vibram rubber is pretty reliable. These really don't hold up as well as the mountain tread in uh, deep mud or deep sand, especially going like downhill when you want to move fast. These things have been incredible, and I just I <laughs> they're the only things I wear now. I um, I absolutely love them a few hundred miles on these things by now and the the bed is still still pretty rugged still my first pair of laces with these I'll sometimes change out my laces every couple hundred miles but it really comes down to like how hard you run or hike or whatever you do in them that will dictate how long your um, your laces last for I'll probably place these before the Tahoe 200 get up about two weeks before and get them get them comfortable and get them where I want them adjust them right but I will, uh, I'll end up wearing these all 200 miles. I mean, they still got tread for days left on them. Thanks to Earthrunners for sending me those guys. I absolutely love them. Uh, hopefully that answers some questions on how I do what I do. And you can too. Just start small, start easy. And, you know, just like when you first started running, right? Like the whole Couch to 5K program is fantastic. Um, get out there. Start small, take some strides, go barefoot walking around your neighborhood, um, you know, do laps at your track, find a nice easy trail, and just go out and stretch your legs. Be natural, be free, enjoy it. It's, um, there's a lot of good information out there. Barefoot Ken Bob Saxon, of course, is the, the grandfather of all this. He wrote the book on all this stuff. Um, you know, check out barefootrunning.com. So there's a lot of good information out there. Uh, you know, look around, start small, start easy, check out YouTube. I'm definitely going to be putting a whole lot more on there, uh, on here, on this channel, for barefoot related things, for sandal related things, uh, and just general ultra trail adventures. I got, uh, Pinole Boo sent me some stuff. I'm going to be trying this out soon. I'm really excited to do that. It's, uh, Pinole. Or course, editing the TRT 100 video and a whole lot more to come so stick around subscribe and uh you know click that thumbs up it always like warms my heart even when one person does it and uh we'll see you in the next one take care